Hello, everyone. Mike and I are going to talk about the next frontiers in uh, infrastructure automation. Now, what is this next uh, frontier that we are looking into? Um, I believe that there are a lot of opportunities for us to automate and also disrupt possibly the way we do physical work at a data center or maybe at a colo uh, place. So what are these physical workflows that we are looking into? Now, if we take power uh, management out of the equation, at a data center, there are predominantly three activities that happen. The first one being rack moves. Now, this is a lot of work that happens when a new data hall is populated with new racks, uh, a human ends up uh, walking more than 10 miles in one day. So over a period of time, you, what we see is there are some process enhancement that happens that will make these manual work a little bit easier. But nonetheless, this is a lot of work that, that a human has to go ahead and do. Similarly, a second activity that we see typically in a data center is server repair. Here you will see a technician getting a ticket for possibly a hardware repair, goes ahead and fix the server by replacing the hardware. Uh, but depending on what hardware that is replaced, there could be more um, workflows that would be spawned. Uh, for example, if it is a hard drive that is to be replaced, then the hard drive needs to be crushed. Uh, a certificate of destruction uh, needs to be received before the technician can go ahead and close that ticket. So if you look at that process end to end for a server repair, there is a lot of automation that happens, but still there are a lot of manual touch points. Similar to that is another activity that happens in a data center is network repair. Here too, a technician is either replacing a line card and optic fixing a kink or in a cable, but nonetheless, in the whole process, if you look at it, there are still quite a few human touch points. So what are the common things that we see in these activities that are happening at a data center? What we are seeing is a lot of manual work that an individual has to do at, uh, at the data center for these activities. So looking at this, there are three questions that arise in our mind. First is, why is there not enough automation in this physical space? Second one, would be, why do we even want automation for physical work at a data center? And third, if we are convinced that we want to do automation, then what are the potential solutions that we can apply to reduce the work that a human does at a site and possibly eliminate the work that a human ends up doing at, a, at the data center for these activities? So let's go through the first question very quickly. Why is there not enough automation in this space? I think the general belief is physical work cannot be automated. Now, maybe so, maybe it might be because it is not prioritized. Maybe there is no desire to do automation work because physical work is not that fancy. So there is a chance that the belief could be that, hey, we don't want to automate the physical work. But what that leads to is that any process that is associated with um, the physical work is also flagged as physical in nature and thereby it's also not automated. To give you an example, let's say in the previous case of uh, hardware repair, someone goes ahead and fixes the, um, the, the incident by replacing a part. That part needs to come from a spares inventory. The spares inventory uh, folks need to make sure that there is enough spares available. So they do a cycle count, which is also manual. So there is no automation happening there. And then um, over time, what will happen is that these processes, they will be made a little bit easier and repeatable, but not necessarily that manual work is completely eliminated. So we are dealing with a lot of physical work that is happening at the data centers, and for that, we, we need automation. But why do we need the automation now? SLAs and everything are great. Uh, operation teams are happy on how things are working, but why do we need automation now? A simple answer to that question is scale. If you look at last few years and, and, the, and the coming new uh, the next years, uh, we see that there is a tremendous growth in the footprint of a data center in the industry. So what happens with, uh, with scale? With scale, there are now 
new type of data center designs. There is a lot more different type of hardware that shows up in the data center. There are new technologies that are there at the data centers that these operation teams have to support. What it causes as an ecosystem is a very complex setup for the operation system to continue doing their work. So contrary to the fact which people believe into is economies of scale, I think scale is not our friend without automation. And what does that lead to? If there is no automation and we are constantly scaling, we will be ending up with a lot more human handoffs to do this operations work. And because of more human handoffs, what we will end up with is more errors and possibly more outages. So it is imperative on us to go ahead and be intentional on the type of automation that we bring in the data center and possibly disruptive ideas to help the operations team. Now let's say we are convinced with the disruptive ideas. I believe that there are two um, um, parts of innovation that we can do. One is on the process side and the other one is on the product side. On the process side is generally workflow automation. Just to give you an example of one repair workflow that we have been talking about. Generally, these tickets in a, in a regular operation center, these tickets will go to a level one triaging um, setup. The level one, then the ticket can flow from level one to level two to level three. Uh, humans are stacked in each of these levels. Each of these levels will have their own set of tools that they will be using to ultimately find a solution to that incident. So you have many humans using many tools and the ticket spends a lot of time in that, in that setup until it reaches the resolution. What we have been working on is instead of that ticket going to a human, we want that ticket to go to a bot. And then the bot uses whatever tools are available and then tries to resolve as many incidents as possible on its own. And in cases where we cannot have uh, the bot solve the problem, it will go to a specific human being. So our philosophy is instead of humans calling tools, can tools call humans? Now this is a very interesting topic. We can spend a lot of time on that. I'll reserve this for another day. Today, what we are here to talk about is how can we develop innovative products that will actually reduce human handoffs. And to do that, I would like to introduce Mike Kaufman, who is going to talk about some of the products that we have been developing that will actually change the way we do physical work at the data center and colo space. Mike. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Manish, for uh, setting the context for the rest of the talk. And thanks to all of you for joining us today. Um, I want to talk about two specific projects that we've been doing that try to address some of the problems that Manish brought up. First is autonomous rack moving. How do we move racks in our data centers? Uh, and that's shown on the left. And shown on the right, and also here on the stage, is a, a mobile robotics platform that we have developed to prove the concepts that automation, physical automation, can really help us in our operations. Let's talk about the rack moving problem first. So, Mini showed you a picture of the data center. Let's put some numbers behind it. These places are huge. So we've got about a million square feet under roof in these buildings. And the long dimension in one of these buildings is almost a quarter mile. So the physical scale of these, of these buildings is, is tremendous. And of course, they're filled with servers. It's why we build the data centers. We want to use and operate these servers in those data centers. But when the useful life of this server is done, someone's got to take the server out of the data hall, move it to the loading dock, put it on a truck, and get it out of the data center, and reverse the process to take the new uh, servers off the truck into the data hall and put them back into use. The large scale of the building and the large number of racks we have means that people can walk a lot. So Manish mentioned 10 miles a day. So if this is your job, you could walk 10 miles today in installing racks. And all that time, you're guiding a heavy, expensive rack through the hallway as you move it from the loading dock into the data center, data hall. And you could do that tomorrow as well. There are hundreds of rack miles in the data center. So solving this problem is important. And we've been partnering with somebody to, to solve this problem. In, in true meta fashion, a logistics manager in one of our data center who had this problem, he was the one walking 10 miles every day, said, there's got to be a better way. And he started to research autonomous tugs. And he reached out to the applied robotics team that I support and said, hey, can we work together to actually make this a product? And we've been doing this work. So you see on the right, 
uh, photos from the loading dock. So now, instead of walking from the loading dock to the data hall, you can have a team that's positioned in the loading dock, and their job is take a rack off a truck, put it on a cart, tell the tug to take the cart to the data hall. And you can have another team in the data hall waiting for that tug to get there where you unload the, the rack and put it in the lineup. On the right, you see a video of that tug slowing down as it goes through one of the doors on its way from the, data, from the loading dock into the data hall. So we've been working to make this a real product to, to ensure that it's safe and scalable and integrated into our operations. This is just one of the physical automation projects that we're doing. And we've proved ourselves that this automation really reduces the physical burden. Another place where we're using physical automation is in our colo spots. So Meta is like many companies. We have a presence in colos around the world where we connect up to internet service providers and we do edge compute. These colos are our on-ramps to the internet. And they're typically not staffed, so no one's there to solve a problem when there is a problem. And the first people that show up really are not typically Meta employees, so they don't have access to all the same software tools you have if you're a network engineer at Meta. And if you've been to a colo, you know that these are loud spaces. So imagine you walk into that space, and it's your job to solve a physical problem. You're unfamiliar with the equipment, you don't know the tools, and it's loud. You don't want to hold your cell phone up while you're trying to solve this problem. So one of the features that we said that would be useful is, hey, let's build a video conference capability. So we've got a screen, we've got a high power speaker, we've got a noise canceling microphone array. And now, if you're a network engineer sitting in London, you can talk to a, a, a technician in, in Los Angeles and you can help them to solve the physical problem uh, in the colo space. But what happens if you're that network engineer and it's eight o'clock in the morning where you are, but no one's in the colo space, and your tools are telling you that something's wrong with a piece of equipment? Well, with this system, you can fire up the robot, you can launch the user interface that's in the center here, and here we got a picture of the colo, it's the plan view, the racks are shown in gray, the robot is circled in blue, and you can say, hey robot, go over to rack 11 in row number two and, and take a picture of what's going on on that rack. And you can confirm or deny what your software tools are telling you with that physical view. Or you could tell that robot, hey, every day at seven o'clock, I want you to take a picture of every rack and only let me know if something's different today than from yesterday. Or you could have that robot sitting on its charging deck and watching to see if someone walks into the colo space and check to see, hey, was there a ticket? Was someone supposed to be in this space? And if they were, you can authenticate them. And if you're not, you can at least know that someone's there that shouldn't be. So with this system, we've proven to ourselves that there is value in, in having this type of, uh, of operation. So we can improve the efficiency of our engineers. These really are proof of concept systems. And we're here today because well, we don't think we're the only ones with these problems, and we want to work with you. We want, we want your help to solve these problems, because I think you're probably having similar problems. We see a lot of problems to solve, asset tracking, drive destruction, asset monitoring, uh, materials handling. These are all things that we've identified that we can solve, and we really want to work with you through OCP, because we think if we work together openly, the, uh, the possibility of success is much greater. So, we've got an email alias, Please, if you're interested, let's work together. Let's get something started in OCP where we work on physical automation. Thank you.